with Unicorn Riot. We are here at DEF CON 26 in the Drone Wars Village speaking with Luke. Should we be uh, worried about drones like hacking us? Drones have been used for a lot of really good things, but also for some bad things. So there exists a need to be able to stop the bad ones so that good ones can continue to fly. What are some of the bad things that drones have been doing? Uh, drones fly drugs and weapons into prisons. They drop explosives on soldiers. They uh, generally harass law enforcement when they're trying when they're trying to conduct an operation. So there's a lot of these things that they could be used for really good things and be del and deliver, for example, blood transfusions. But then they also could be used to deliver bombs. So are we talking about hacking drones or drones hacking us here? Both. So in order to effectively stop a drone, you really need to be able to selectively target that drone and remove it from the airspace. Because if you don't, then you end up and you try to just jam everything, you end up jamming all the drones, the bad drones, the good drones, cell phones, pacemakers, everything goes down. Yeah. So to solve for that, you have to be able to know how drones operate. You need to be able to speak drone. So what's going on here in the Drone Wars Village? Yeah, so Drone Wars Village is a really cool opportunity for people to get hands-on time with drones to learn how they operate, how they communicate, how they work, so then you can make drones better and more secure, or you can learn to be able to remove them from situations they shouldn't be in. Who should be kind of uh, anxious about drones hacking them, you know what I mean, or having negative consequences from that? Sure, well, not to sound like, a, like everybody should be afraid, but really, Drones change everything. So before, in order for someone to put an aircraft in the sky, they'd have to learn how to fly, they'd have to get into an airplane, they'd have to go and fly and put themselves in that way. And if they had a you know onboard computer that can hack into a, um, into a system, they have to be physically in the aircraft. Now, for a few hundred dollars, or buy, buying or stealing a drone, you can go do that in a matter of seconds and have access to airspace like no one else has ever had before. What are some of the things that you know of currently that you do to defend yourself against these rogue drones? Yeah, well, first is just being aware of the threat vector. Okay. So it's not just being, oh, if drones are big, bad, and scary, and they're gonna take over the world, but it's really understanding, well, now that drones exist, how does that change things? So for example, like critical, op the critical infrastructure. They have uh, miles of perimeter around their area to prevent people from coming in and, um, and hacking their systems. But now that drones exist, now they have to consider, now that a drone can fly over and land right on their roof, how does that change things? So it's really seeing how do drones change the world? How does that affect us in both really good ways, but also some negative ways if left unmanaged? In this village, is there kind of a mentorship going on where people are learning from somebody more experienced how to uh, program or detect these drones? Um, or is it kind of like hands-on, like ground zero day sort of inventing new things? Yeah, it's actually, it's a range of all of that. Okay. So you have all the way from people who've just never touched a drone before and want to learn how to make a drone, and they're being taught how to make drones out of clipboards, which is really cool. And then later on, those same drones that are made out of clipboards are then going to be hacked. So okay. you can, and people are going to find zero day exploits for those drones. So it really ranges from everything, from people who are just novices who want to get their hands dirty on how can be drones be used to be potentially put a device on it so that the drone could enable hacking, or the vice versa, now how do I hack a drone to prevent it from hacking. So I attended a talk last year about drone defense or yeah. count, drone counter event defense and I saw things like eagles you know and nets and yeah. was it ultrasonic pulses and stuff. Yeah. Um, what, what, other, what other things are happening or what do we learn here from for counter drone defense? Yeah so on counter like counter drone is split between primarily detection and mitigation. Okay. Mitigation gets a lot of the you know attention because it's stopping a drone. Right. So you know drone's doing something bad, let's stop it. And on mitigation it's split between kinetic and non-kinetic. So you have a kinetic side, which is I'm gonna shoot something at it, I'm gonna throw something at it, I'm gonna launch a net at it. And ultimately with kinetic systems, they some arguably are effective, but also carry a lot of collateral damage. And they also, what happens if that drone wasn't actually doing something bad, or it was accidentally flying, for example, over a wildfire? Maybe that person didn't know there was a wildfire and they were impeding helicopters, but they were, so they need to be removed. But does that mean that their aircraft should be shot down? So then there's the other side, which is non-kinetic, which is has a lot less collateral damage, but the problem is that most non-kinetic mitigations are just barrage jamming, and drones operate on ISM bands. 
2.4 gigahertz, 5.8 gigahertz. A lot of things operate on that. So once you start jamming 2.4 gigahertz, a lot of bad things happen. And especially when you consider the fact that it actually might be worse to start jamming 2.4 gigahertz than just let the drone fly to begin with. So then that's where there's this precision targeted mitigation comes in, which is what White Fox does, which is targeting the individual drone itself. So if you have five drones in the air and four of them are good and one of them is behaving that poorly, then why should all of them have to be disrupted? Why should everyone's cell phones be disrupted? Why not just target that individual drone? And that really allows drones to be able to be used for good instead of just blanketing, wiping out all the drones. How, how do you, you know, zero in on a particular drone. What is some of that technology? Can you talk about some of that? Yeah, sure. So drones, are, they operate uh, using primarily uh, frequency operator. So you have the spectrum and there's a lot of things operating on like 2.4 gear, gigahertz, right? You have like uh, routers, you have uh, Bluetooth, you have all these different things that are operating in the spectrum. So what a lot of them do is instead of operating on just one single channel, they hop around. And they hop around from a casual observation and it look like it's random, like they're just hopping randomly. And then on the other end, of the listen, on the listening side, they're listening and know exactly where to listen at exactly the right time, which makes drones really hard to, example, to jam. So in order to jam it, you have to wipe out the whole spectrum. It's not like you can just jam that individual piece right there and just target that. So what we do is we have a machine learning algorithm that listens and learns where the drone is going and then is able to know where it's going to go. Cool. So then we target just that individual little slice of the spectrum, just focusing on that drone. And then on top of that, we also allow you to take control of the drone. So it's not just emitting a bunch of energy, it's very targeted emission that then takes control of it and reroutes it. So in some cases that means simply landing it, returning it to the owner, returning to launch, or rerouting, rerouting it around the airspace. And all that does is it encourages the good use of drones. It doesn't affect anybody that's using it for the good purposes, but it also doesn't create a bigger problem than existed previously. So if somebody wants to kind of get involved and like say they're not here at DEF CON, what would you recommend? What's a good avenue for that um, to kind of do what you do? Yeah, I'd say build a drone. Drones are so accessible. It sounds so crazy. It's like, you know, maybe five years ago, 10 years ago, and people say, oh, you know, they built their own computer. And building your own computer is really accessible. You can go on Instructables and find guides to build computers. Same with drones. You can go and you can build a drone. For example, we're building drones here with, uh, out of uh, out of clipboards, right? Like they're really accessible, and they cost less than fifty dollars to make. Like no, never before in history have you been able to access airspace ever anywhere close to what you can do now. And now, finally, we're at a place where you can go buy a twelve dollar. Uh, module that you put in the drone that can allow for flight control and autonomous control that is just never before conceived of being able to be so accessible. Um, is there anything else you wanted to add? Yeah, I'd say the, the, one of the final things is that there's so much there's so much division in the drone and the counter drone space and what the, the fact is that there, there cannot be a mass adoption of drones and this ability for drones to fly, you know, openly in Amazon fly the drones until people get a general sense of security and know that drones can be used for good and that there's a way to differentiate the good from the bad. That's so cool. Well, thank you so much for um, interviewing with me and also kind of like making the future more safe.